All right, gang, stat 1800, more on multiple regression. Um, last video I had to quit early because I had a coughing attack, so hoping that doesn't happen. But uh, let's, uh, let's focus on the um, data set redwood uh, trees, and it may be given just as redwood. In fact, I think it is now that I think about it. <clears throat> and what we've looked at before when we were back studying simple linear regression is we looked at the uh, relationship between the diameter of uh, at breast height uh, and the height of a redwood tree. But I'm kind of interested to see, uh, is there any additional information in the height of the redwood tree that can be gained in, well, I should say, in predicting the height of a redwood tree uh, by adding the bark thickness? So uh, let's... Um, uh, let, let's go get the data. So, uh, again, this this is the first thing I want to look at. Now, let me let me kind of show my hand here and tell you the game plan. The first thing I want to do is I want to look at the overall model. And the null hypothesis for looking at the overall model and conducting the F test would be that the beta for uh, breast height. is equal to the beta for bark thickness. Equal zero. And then the alternative <clears throat> and, then, and let's just let this be one and this be two because that's the way it'll be in your my math lab assignment. So at least one of these is not equal to zero. And we'll just set our um, alpha equal 0 0.05. Now the standard procedure here <clears throat> is to look at the test statistic. And in this uh, case, the F statistic is going to be gotten uh, from our ANOVA table. And then what we'll do, uh, I'll tell you what, guys, that's a little, seems a little, seems not as clear as I would like it. I think, I think that's a little bit better. And then we'll look at our p-value and see where that takes us. Okay, so uh, guys, let's uh, let's go to, um, well, I'll show you what I did. I went to uh, Stack Crunch and then I went data sets from your textbook. And then once, once I did that, I went to Chapter 13 and I chose Redwood. <clears throat> and then I uh, looked at this, this data. So guys, to run a multiple regression model, it's, uh, it's very simple. Just go to stat, go to regression, and go to multiple linear. We start out with our y variable. In this case, it's the height of the tree. And I'd like to predict the height of the tree uh, by looking at the diameter of breast height, diameter at breast height, and bark thickness. Now, I don't want to get into any, any interactions just yet. That'll be uh, in a later video. <clears throat> I don't really want to save anything. I don't want to group anything. All I want to do right now is just uh, conduct a hypothesis test. I really wish that wouldn't pop up there, but it does. Uh, I don't want to do any stepwise or forward uh, uh, re uh, selection just yet. And uh, really, I don't want to do any of this just yet. I just want to look at a simple ANOVA table and, and go from there. So when I hit compute, guys, what I have, I have tunnel vision on this part right here. This evaluates the overall fit of the model. In other words, it evaluates <clears throat> the effectiveness of the diameter breast height and bark thickness in predicting uh, the height of the tree. And you can see that our p-value is less than 0.05. So what I would do... Uh, and I'd like to bring this up. Well, I'll tell you what. The, the F statistic here is 33.017. So I'm going to write that down. <clears throat> and the p-value is less than 0 0.0001. So the p-value is clearly statistically significant. Since our p-value is less than 0.05, right? 
So we can say that, uh, back to the original question, is there a linear relationship between the diameter at breast height and bark thickness uh, with the height of a re uh, uh, redwood tree? Uh, yes, because our p-value is less than 0.05. <clears throat> so collectively, these two variables um, uh, predict what I want them to predict. Now, second phase... Uh, of what I call the model diagnostics. Is to look at R squared and the adjusted R squared. And guys, these are, um, again, provided to you in the uh, ANOVA, uh, right below the ANOVA output. So uh, the R squared is uh, 0.7858. <clears throat> and the adjusted R squared is 0.762. Now, the one that I focus on here, when I have more than one predictor, and I, I discussed this in the previous video, um, sometimes this can overinflate. To, so to control for <clears throat> the addition and addition of a, uh, a, a more predictor variables and sample size, it's best to uh, focus on the adjusted R squared. So what I can say here is I can say that 76.2% uh, of the variation in height, think, why, can be explained by the variation in bark thickness <clears throat> and height, I'm sorry, uh, diameter at breast height. Okay, uh, that is right, diameter breadth, yeah. So variation in, in bark thickness and diameter breast height. So, okay, yeah. So 76.2% of the variation in height can be explained by the variation in bark thickness. And <clears throat> so guys, just think of this as probably our X1 and think of this as probably our X2. Um, so... Uh, To account, I guess this is probably as good a way as any. Um, sample size and uh, the number of predictors. <clears throat> now, what will be the difference in the adjusted R squared and the R squared? What if uh, and again, guys, when I have more than one predictor, you know, I have tunnel vision on this value right here. But if, if just for uh, the sake of uh, an academic exercise, what if we wanted to uh, uh, interpret just the R squared? Well, this would change. So we would say that 78.6% of the variation in height can be explained by the variation in bark thickness and diameter of breast height, but we wouldn't have this statement because the R squared does not take into account the sample size and the number of predictors. The adjusted R squared does. But nevertheless, uh, chances are in your My Math Lab assignments, uh, you will be asked to interpret uh, both of these. <clears throat> now guys, uh, what happens next? is I want to examine uh, the predictors individually. All right. So what I would first of all like to do, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, test that the, uh, the beta for um, bark thickness
equal to zero versus beta for bark thickness not equal to zero and my test at point zero five so my test statistic and my p-value uh, we'll tell the story here so guys go back to the output again I'm gonna focus on bark thickness so I'm focusing on this one <clears throat> so you can see up here that we've got our model that uh, our model height can be predicted by uh, taking 62.014 plus 2.057 times the diameter of breast height plus 15.64 times bark thickness. But right now, I want to just focus on this bark thickness, okay? So the, the estimate is 15.64. The standard error is 7.15. That's very interesting. Standard error is kind of uh, high there, which uh, tells some stuff. And the test statistic, I'm going to write this down, 2.187. And our p-value is 0.0422. <clears throat> now, how did they get that? How did they get the 0.0422? Well, guys, if we go to stat, and again, degrees of freedom uh, are 18, right? n minus k minus 1. Okay, so uh, guys, the way to get that is we go our calculator and go to t. And again, we have 2.187. So we're going to look, I'm going to look at standards. So degrees of freedom are 18. And I'm going to go above 2.187. You can see 0 0.021 if we multiply that by 2 because we have a rejection region down here too. Uh, and because of symmetry, we can just multiply. Ah, don't want that. Uh, we can uh, multiply that by 2 to get 0 0.042. So what we can say is we can say that bark thickness is significant in predicting uh, uh, the height of the tree. Now, how do we interpret the coefficient? We talked about that in the previous video, but I think it's going to be good um, to, to uh, ex uh, expand on that a little bit more. So our uh, beta for bark thickness is 15.636. And I'm just going to call that beta 1, okay? <clears throat> now... How do we interpret this? Well, just like we did in the previous video, uh, controlling for um, diameter at breast height. Each one unit increase in bark thickness increases the predicted tree height Point six three six, and I think this is in feet. I'm pretty sure it is. <clears throat> All right, let's look at the other. What's our beta two? Well, our beta two is two point oh five seven. What's the interpretation of that? Controlling for uh, bark thickness. Each one unit increase in uh, uh, 
diameter at breast height. Increases the predicted tree height by 2.057 feet. Now don't get confused by this number being bigger than this number because <clears throat> I think that the uh, uh, the one unit increase in, in bark thickness, I believe bark thickness is maybe in inches, uh, I'm not for sure, uh, we could go see, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't say, but uh, I, I don't know, it may not, not even be inches, I'm not really sure, because I can't imagine bark thickness being, well, yeah, I guess so, so I, I guess I'm not really sure about the units, so that's why I put the generic units uh, in the interpretation. Now, let's, uh, let's predict a tree height with the following. And um, so um, diameter at breast height, uh, let's choose something reasonable, uh, let's just say 35. So how would we do that? Well guys, uh, we're going to go back to our original model. So our height is 62.14 plus 2.057 times diameter, breast height, plus 15.636 times bark thickness. All right, so we want to predict uh, when the uh, bark thickness is 3.2 and the diameter is 35. Well, guys, just plug and chug. But I believe, and let me check this out. I, I, I want to think that we're able to do that here. So if we come up and go Options, Edit, um, well... Uh, 95 percent confidence interval for individual prediction I believe that we can do it right here no we can't do it right there so guys what we have to do that gives us the each each predictor so guys uh, we have to just plug and chug this so uh, 62 point uh, 14 plus 2.057 times 35 uh, plus 15.636 times 3.2. Guys, I'm going to grab my calculator. Hold on just a second. All right, we had uh, there were about four calculators in my house, and all the batteries were dead. So last night we went through and uh, replaced all the batteries. So uh, I know too much information. All right, so guys, when I put this uh, in my calculator, hopefully you're doing the same thing. So we make sure that we get things. Uh, it's, it's really frustrating when students know what they're doing, but they get uh, caught up on something, uh, you know, small like this. So guys, that's what, um, that's what I have. And I get the predicted value, the predicted um, tree height of 184.17. Now, haven't talked much about this uh, intercept, uh, 62.14. What does this tell us? Well, guys, this tells us the uh, predicted 
height of uh, a tree <laughs> when uh, diameter at uh, breast height equals zero and bark thickness equals zero. Now, guys, it's one thing to academic, you know, set something that's an academic exercise, and it's another thing for the academic exercise to make sense. Guys, obviously, if you have a diameter of breast height of zero, then you got no tree, or the tree is below your breast height. If you got a bark thickness of zero, then again, something's kind of wacky. So what we can do, if we put zero and zero in for each of these values, you see that we get zero plus zero, so the height is just 62.14. So again, in theory, and again, as an academic exercise, the intercept tells us the predicted height when both of our variables, both in this case, are equal to zero. And again, sometimes this doesn't make sense because we're measuring the height uh, well, we're measuring the height of a tree at breast height, and we're uh, measuring bark thickness. But sometimes it does. If you, 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 you're trying to predict something, and maybe one of your variables is number of siblings, and then maybe the number of um, uh, you know, uh, children under the age of 16. Well, you could have no siblings, just like me, uh, and you could uh, maybe live in a house with no um, children under the age of 16. So sometimes these values take on, the, these variables make sense for a value of zero, but sometimes they don't, and this is a case where they didn't. But anyway, guys, in general, the intercept of your model tells you the predicted y when the predictors are set equal to zero. All right, so <clears throat> let's, uh, let's carry out uh, uh, one of the, uh, the, uh, the test of hypothesis. So uh, is uh, breast height uh, is significant? predictor of height. So our null hypothesis, and we'll just call it uh, beta j equal to zero. And we'll go alpha 0 0.05. So guys go to um, uh, diameter breast height, uh, go to our output. So we're right here. The test statistic is 4646. 646, right? And the p value is equal to point zero 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 two. All right, so uh, it is a statistically significant predictor. Now, how did they get the point oh oh two? Well, again, they used the calculator t degrees of freedom eighteen. Again, n minus k minus one. We'll go greater than 4.646. And compute, we get 0 0.0001. When we multiply that by 2, we get 0 0.0002. So guys, we can, again, looking at the output, we can look at the overall model, or we can look at the uh, predictive uh, the statistical significance of each individual predictor. All right, the next thing I want to look at is uh, how we calculate uh, a 95% confidence interval, for example, for bark thickness. 
Now, <clears throat> again, we, we think of beta being the, uh, the parameter estimate, or I'm sorry, parameter estimate, the parameter, and we have an estimate, uh, which in this case is our B for the uh, bark thickness. And by the way, let's, uh, let's just assume we want to construct a 95% confidence interval. And we want to add and subtract, of course, uh, margin of error. Well, it turns out that, and I'm not going to write all that down, but it turns out that the, to, to calculate the confidence interval for uh, an individual predictor, uh, we just take uh, plus or minus the uh, T critical times the standard error for B. Now, this works out pretty nicely because, uh, you know, this, this information is provided to you in the output. So for bark thickness, we have, uh, as the estimate, we have, uh, this is our B, so 15.636. Uh, we need our T critical. Our standard error is uh, 7.148. So back over here, uh, if we can find this value, uh, then we're easily going to be able to calculate uh, our confidence interval. So uh, guys, remember that uh, uh, our degrees of freedom for this are n minus k minus 1. Uh, our sample size, uh, well, what is our sample size? I think it's 21. Yeah, I didn't want to make a mistake. So our sample size is 21. We have two predictors, uh, uh, diameter of breast height and bark thickness, and minus one. So, guys, our degrees of freedom are 18. So, we can use the uh, calculator that we have on uh, StatCrunch that we've used uh, ad nauseum. And I kind of like between here. So, uh, degrees of freedom 18. I want the between area to be 0.95 because of a 95% confidence interval. So we see that the T critical is 2.1009. So guys, back over here, uh, let's, uh, let's see how this would, uh, this would work out on the calculator if we need to do it this way. So we would have uh, uh, 15.676 minus uh, 2.1009 times 7.148. Uh, check for typos, um, which I must have one. Oh, yeah. So 15 points. Okay, sure, that should work. So we have uh, 0. 0.659 and change uh, that to a plus. <coughs> so our confidence interval. Oh, gosh. Uh, 30.693. Now, the first thing I notice... ...does not contain zero, indicating to me... Statistically significant. There's sufficient evidence to <coughs> conclude that this uh, predictor uh, helps in uh, trying to predict this independent variable is, uh, is uh, useful in predicting tree height. Now, how would we do that on StackCrunch? Uh, guys, it turns out it's uh, very, very, very easy. So if we go back to one of our outputs, the one for multiple regression, go to options, go to edit. <coughs> and instead of doing a hypothesis test, do a confidence interval. And you'll see that uh, the bark thickness, the lower is uh, 0.618. <coughs> And the upper is uh, 30.654. Uh, guys, we're off a little bit. The reason we're off a little bit is uh, I didn't go out far enough. Uh, I just want to demonstrate that to you, uh, the effect of rounding. So uh, well, let's, let's do that. I think this is going to be a good academic exercise. So if we go 
636227 plus or minus 2.1009 times 7.14 uh, 83979. Now, what we got before, <clears throat> I remember, point six five nine to thirty point six nine three. Now, guys, that's what we got before, and we can see that we were off a little bit. So let's, uh, let's put the complete decimal expansion. Got distracted there. I remember a uh, professor of mine demonstrating this. Uh, <coughs> All right, so if we get that, we get 0 0.618. All right, so point, uh, what was it, 0 0.618? I'm kind of distracted by my daughter, which uh, is, apparently she needs a ride someplace. Uh, and, uh, and let's change that to a plus. So we have 30.654. All right, guys, I'm actually kind of glad that happened. I wish it matched up. Well, I kind of wish it hadn't, but uh, I think this is a good academic exercise. Uh, I remember uh, this almost a, a very similar illustration. One of my professors pointing out the difference of uh, instead of going out three places, going out six uh, on the standard error and the uh, estimate and how the intervals actually change. Now, you can see the 0.618 uh, matches up perfectly with what we had before. And the 30.654 matches up perfectly, I'm, I'm sorry, matches up perfectly with what StatCrunch provided. So it's really important that when you, uh, when, when you perform calculations that you, uh, you know, well, it's just important that you go out as far as, uh, as you can manage, uh, I guess is the easiest way to put that. So, uh, guys, I am done with this. Uh, I think... Uh, the next video, I'm going to look at uh, assumptions, and uh, we'll go from there. So take care.